in five minutes. All right. Uh, good, e good evening. Oh, sorry. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Our first uh, song that we'll be singing tonight is The Goodness of God. So if you know that one, please feel free, worship, and sing along. Welcome. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sorry, friends, and sorry for those of you at home. I gotta remember how to do this. I know. Preset fire. Okay. We're just. Yeah. <laughs> The cameras are strange at the moment. Hold on a sec. You can hear my voice. I could have run to um, the other side, but here we go. That should do it. There it is. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Sarah McManus. I'm excited to have you here with, with me tonight. And uh, I'm realizing, there we go. Now it's finally right on the screens. Sorry to those of you at home. Got a couple of uh, ways that you can connect with us and find the worship, order of worship. You can find it here in the sanctuary uh, through our, um, our online through order of worship. Click on the button, everything should be there. 
Uh, please let me know if it's not. We're still working out some of the kinks of uh, figuring everything out. And also here in the sanctuary, we've got the half sheets of uh, the basic order. Uh, if you want to find a, the uh, detail of the song lyrics and communion, you're going to have to go online, but the, the small sheet is out in the hallway. Also, uh, let us know you're here, here in the sanctuary. We'd love to connect with you in our clipboards. Um, sign in, pass it down, let us know who you are and uh, how to connect. Also, um, we uh, have our online check-in uh, through our uh, website, so you can find the link right under the YouTube page. You can find it on Facebook, or you can use the QR code that's on the screen. Uh, but now, uh, let us turn to a time of prayer, including for uh, maybe a little flustered pastor, but that's all right. Uh, Prayer is such an important heart, part of our community and how we connect with one another. And there are so many in our midst who are in need of prayer, um, whether it is through the, the actions of our lives, uh, through meeting strangers. I had an uh, interesting wrong number conversation uh, with a woman named Annie in New York today, so we're going to keep her in our prayers as well as uh, all of those we interact with, whether within our community or beyond. Uh, so I invite you to a time of silent prayer, and then I'll continue with a pastoral prayer, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Let us turn to God. Heavenly and gracious God, it is in your presence that we come to, to worship you tonight. I invite you into our hearts to inspire us, to comfort us, to challenge us, and to guide us. We all come with different connections to you, and we know that you connect with each of us. Just as we know that you taught us to live and pray together in the very life of Christ, who taught us to say, Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oftentimes, this is the time in our worship service that we do our offering, which I know is the next slide, but uh, we normally do that during communion. So if you would like to give online, the information is going to be here in a minute, minute um, but during our communion time, we will uh, actually do our offering. So now I invite you to uh, sing with us, Lord, I need you. I come, I confess, bowing here I find my rest, without you I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart, Lord I need Oh God. 
grace is found is where you are and where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me Lord I need you oh I need you Thank you, Bill, for leading us in music, and we are figuring out all the details. One of our cameras went out, so here's the complication. All right. All right. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. Hi. I know it's always kind of funny when I'm doing weird things online for those who are here in the sanctuary, but I bet it's nice for those watching online, assuming that I pushed all the buttons right and we're actually online. All right, so uh, our announcements tonight uh, are pretty similar to what we've been going on. Our uh, school supplies, if you have any leftovers uh, that didn't go to school and want to bring them here so we can connect them with the local schools, uh, get them here in the next couple days, as well as dental products, toothbrushes, and travel size toothpaste. Uh, the mission team will uh, go through and gather and uh, organize all of that when they are done. Also, uh, if you would like to make it easier for me not to mess up so much and want to know how to run the cameras and all of the details over here, we are, are, are training Bernadette, um, but I hadn't started on the cameras with her yet. So um, if that's something you're passionate about, let me know. Otherwise, starting next week when we are up and down and up and down, we need somebody who's greeting at the door to welcome people into the sanctuary. Uh, if you'd love to read scripture or help with the offering on regular Sundays or sing or even help with communion, uh, please let me know. I'll uh, throw you in and, and uh, give you all the information. I won't actually throw you in. Uh, I will gladly prepare you and connect um, rather than just calling on everyone. I w yes, I'm talking about Wednesdays specifically. Not Sundays. I mean, you can help on Sundays, too, but this is Wednesday's worship connection. Uh, it turns out, I'm a little scatterbrained today. Here I was thinking I was doing real well today. Excuse. You did. You did. You confused me. All right. Well, if you would like to work, help with worship in any way, and that includes those of you who are at home, we can record things. We can connect in that way. Uh, please let me know. Also, we would love your help with education. We need teachers, we need organizers, um, somebody who can uh, look at a sheet and say, oh, we need 
popsicle sticks. We need chenille stems or, I don't, the things you need for crafts. So if that's something that you love to do, let me know. Uh, one of the other things that I'm excited about is uh, we are training buddies this year, people who will be able to sit next to uh, one or two of our, our uh, students to help them to focus, help to answer questions and connect. And actually, uh, the beauty of questions is a part of tonight's sermon. So uh, if that's something that you really connect with, uh, let me know and we'll get you trained. And all of this gets started next week. Our meals begin next week. Youth group, Flame Kids all begin next week. So we are excited for this. And then uh, another thing, we talked about this in today's newsletter. If you don't get the newsletter, let me know and I will get that uh, to you. Uh, September 30th, we are hosting uh, for our district an Imagination Day a day to think about uh, new ways of doing church outside the doors of our building, uh, specifically called Fresh Expressions. Uh, this was a speaker from our annual conference this year talking about ways to connect. Uh, maybe you have a community of people that uh, do yoga together, and you think that'd be a great place to uh, talk about Jesus. Maybe you have a community who meets in a dog park, Maybe you have a community that uh, does Dungeons and Dragons together. Whatever it is, and you want to connect with God and that activity, join us on September 30th here at Flame of Faith, and uh, we're going to talk about ideas and plans and ways that we can connect even beyond our doors, as well as strengthen uh, within. So that'll be September 30th. You'll see a little bit more information uh, if you are just really good at hosting events and want to help me host that, let me know. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, all, everything else is uh, coming out and we're uh, connecting each and every week. Today, we are finally not talking about the disciples, except that we're still in Romans, so Paul's, you know, still the writer. But we're going to talk about the community of God. Uh, this is a connection we have to each other. We're going to take a moment to read some of Paul's words about what it means to live in love and community. And tonight's scripture sounds a whole lot like Paul's words about what it means to live in love. You might recognize some of these as from um, similar to something you heard at a wedding, similar to something you were taught in youth group. Uh, but this is uh, from Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend a hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. And if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here is our reading. That last bit uh, reminds me of something my mom always said. Uh, one of my mom's favorite phrases was to kill him with kindness. Very similar statement. All right. So I told you that I love questions. What is your favorite why question? Or maybe what question why are you thinking of right now? What do you got?
This is the quietest I've ever heard this group. Just why what? Why am I asking questions? Valid point. Because I got a point, we'll get there. All right. Eleanor, why is the sky blue? Eleanor, what do you got? Caleb, what do you got? Okay, so you're answering his question. The sky is blue because the sun reflects off of water on the earth, right? Okay, what's your why? You have never not had a why question. Why is the universe? That's a big question. I'm going to go with God. Also, not much of an answer. Regan? So that we don't fall off. Oh, wait. No. I, you all know I'm bad at science. Why does the Earth spin at the speed it does? Anybody know? Oh, you have the answer? Okay, Eleanor, what's your question? Why is there walls and ceilings? I'm going to go with winter for that one. Steven. That's fair. Eleanor, you got another one? Why don't my eyes work the same as others? Oh, everybody's a little bit different, aren't they? Do you remember? Yeah? Why are we asking questions? Well, one of my favorite things to do is to ask why. Why, specifically, being me, I like to ask, why do we do the things we do? So, why do we come to church? Why do we sing songs? Why does the computer never work the way I want it to? <laughs> No, that's fair. That's fair. You're off the clock. Uh, but, but, you know, why do we do what we do? Why do we treat people the way we do? Why do we um, help people or not help people? Now, we've got lots of logic behind our actions, of course. We act certain ways because we are evolutionarily predisposed to it. We eat more sugar than we need to because our bodies think that we're going to be starving tomorrow even though we know it will not. We act certain ways because our families or cultures, I say on a regular basis, oh, let me scoot right past you, because I am a dorky Midwesterner and has always been. We act in certain ways because of societal pressure or our socioeconomic status. Okay, so I hate bad pens. Pens that don't work well or are really hard to write on, I am a pen snob, is the exact way to describe me. However, I cannot physically convince myself to throw away a bad pen if it still works. I jump for joy if it goes out and I can be like, all right, garbage, throw it away, get rid of it. But if it still works, I set it back in my bin, and then I grab it again, and I get annoyed every single time. Why do I th do this? Because I grew up with the economic pressure to not waste what we have. It was important in my childhood. But the why of morals, decision making, this is my favorite question. I really, like, you all think that I nerd out about science fiction and anime and pens, and Jesus and stuff, but really, I nerd out about my favorite why question. Why do we treat others in specific ways? Why do we act the way we do? I love ethics. I would have studied ethics had I decided to disappear into a library and never come out. All socioeconomical society, familial, evolutionary reasoning aside, 
Why do we act the way we do? As Christians, <clears throat> we have formed a system of ethics and actions based on our love of God. And Paul, the guy who wrote Romans, the guy raised and trained on the system of the Torah and also in the ethics of Greek society, is trying to explain an entirely new, but still connected, version of ethics through the lens of Christ. Christ doesn't say, don't murder. Christ says, love your neighbor. Now, if you love your neighbor, you're not going to murder them. I'm going to also just say, don't murder. Murder bad. Now, for some of us, it is easier to do the rules. Some of us like rules. Don't murder. Don't steal things. Don't sit around in jealousy for other stuff. Don't lust after someone that is not your romantic partner. Don't be cruel. Don't hurt others. These are pretty good rules in life. But the listing of it must be done in community and connection. One of my favorite traditions Oh, what do you got? Okay, we, we're back to why. What do you got? Why is the earth round? Well, oh, we've got lots of answers. From the hallway, why is the earth round? Okay, so gravity, and also I'm guessing that spinning that you talked about earlier, the other shapes in space all shaped it to be round. Originally it wasn't round, it was just like a cloud of things. All right, we're going to skip the why questions for a little while. You can ask me all of them later, okay? Unless they happen to be about rules. So one of my favorite traditions in modern, most modern Jewish communities is a conversation around, like a conversation around sin. If there's a question to be asked, um, you know, is it sinful to eat beef? The conversation does not end, with, end just with, well, here are the lot, dietary laws. They don't exclude beef. We're good. But then becomes a question and a conversation. Well, beef has environmental impacts on our world. Ah, is it an economically feasible source of protein? Does it, the conversation affect our communities and our environment? And so the conversation continues and community makes a decision. The challenges and specifics of actions and decisions are important ongoing discussions in a community of believers. Yes, I'm the pastor. No, I don't make the rules. So as Paul speaks, he says, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to eat. For by doing this, you are killing them with kindness. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So the question, next question becomes, who are our enemies? And what are the ethics of hurting ourselves and our communities just to be kind to our enemies? So our conversations expand. And then we learn and we grow and we do it together. To love and live in community is hard work. It is wrapped up in a constant conversation and evaluation. I am so excited by the idea that I don't have to do it alone. I don't have to have all the answers. One of the most incredible ways that I have learned about God over the last few years is that my understanding of God is not the only understanding of God. I understand God differently than you do, and you do, and those of you at home. And so when I learn and listen, when I hear about how you picture God and you think about God, it changes and expands my own. I think the same is true when we talk about morality and sin. We take those basic rules of Jesus. Love your neighbor. Bless your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And we, we have conversation. So if I am struggling with a question of right and wrong, of sin, I don't have to struggle alone. I can come to my community and say, I need help. Help me find a solution. 
And we all come to the community with struggles. Yes, there are the moral questions. I can't decide what is right in this situation. There are also the financial struggles. Hey, I need help. Sometimes we have to ask for it. Sometimes we need physical help. This summer, I needed to learn how to physically rely on other people. On the the youth mission trip, the poor teenagers had to make sure that, you know, Pastor Sarah got from place to place. Sometimes we need mental help. We are struggling within our own minds with depression, with other, other ways that our minds can hurt us. Sometimes we need spiritual help. We struggle with the question of God. We struggle with what it means to live in our lives. And the best thing about it is we don't have to do it alone. I can't do it alone. And nobody else has to. So I invite all of us to step in the direction of God's presence and love. What is a community of love and support? What does that mean? What is a community that does better? How can we do better? And what kind of incredible presence can we have in each other's lives? And tonight, we get to start where Christ always begins, at the table. If you look back on the stories of Jesus, when he's trying to figure something out, when he's trying to teach a lesson, he is often doing it around a meal. And so we reflect that tonight. We come to God's table, and I'm going to invite you all to participate with me. Uh, Lydia, you're my go-to. Will you help me out? Will you bring hand sanitizer as well? Thank you. All right. Well, all right, let me see if I can do it. It's okay. Okay. We'll do communion from afar. There we go. For some reason, the remote is working and not the fancy. Who knows? All right. We are training Bernadette. She is doing wonderful. She is trying hard things and doing new things and working to help the community. Thank you. All right. Now can you change the slides? I know there's so many things. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us as a community confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law We have rebelled against your love, and we have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God. You spoke to us through the prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation and neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And at his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves and praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and those who are at home on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As I said before, this is God's table, not our own. And so all are welcome at God's table, and I invite you to come forward.
Let us pray. God, at this table set by you, we come as your people. Strengthen us, guide us, and lead us. Amen. All right, our next song is Hello, My Name Is. All right, Bernadette, you got it? All right. Hello, my name is Regret. I'm pretty sure we have met. Every single day of your life, I'm the whisper inside that won't let you forget. Hello, my name is Defeat. I know you recognize me. Just when you think you can win, I'll drag you right back down again till you lost all belief. These are the voices, these are the lies that I believed in for the very last time. Hello, my name is child of the one true king. I've been saved, I've been changed, I have been set free. Amazing grace is the song I sing. Hello, my name is child of the one true king. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, 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 oh. I am no longer defied by all the wreckage behind. The one who makes all things new has proven it's true. Just take a look at my life. set free. Amazing grace is the song I sing. Hello, my name is child of the one true king. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, oh. What love the Father has lavished upon us that we should be it worked. I was just going to run. <laughs> Hear the benediction. May the God who inspires us to live and thrive together inspire us to ask why, to connect, and to share God's love with all. For we are truly children of God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>